Hi all. Uh, today, talking about ensuring plugin GPL compatibility via uh, GitHub Actions. Uh, a little bit more about me, uh, Director of Open Source Initiatives at 10UP uh, on pretty much every social platform, including uh, own.org, GitHub, and Twitter or X. I'm at Jeff Paul, uh, also online, jeffpaul.com. If you're gonna take a picture of a slide today because you wanna get notes, this is the one because my slides are up on my website, jeffpaul.com. Also because there's a really nice picture of me on there too. Um, that's from uh, Reykjavik, the Rainbow Road there um, from the 10UP Summit earlier this year. 10UP's about 300 people, um, fully distributed, fully remote, uh, focused on crafting websites, apps, and tools for content creators uh, while being mindful and contributing back to the open web uh, which is the foundation upon which 10UP and, and many of our businesses, if not all, are built upon. Uh, a little bit more about that open source practice. Uh, it was founded uh, or formalized in 2019 when I joined the company, now up to, to 10 members strong. Again, all focus on uh, crafting a better open web, of which this project, uh, WordPress, is a part of. Part of that work is contributing to WordPress core. So across major releases, ensuring that uh, 10 uppers are contributing uh, in core, docs, editor, wherever it may be, finding their uh, skill sets and helping them find uh, places across major releases, uh, just like 6.3, uh, which came out recently, and the uh, 17 10 uppers that were active there. Another part of our practice is maintaining a suite of about two dozen plugins, um, most available on the .org repo. Uh, some examples classify which leverages cloud-based services like Microsoft Azure AI, IBM Watson, and OpenAI, all very hot right now, right? Um, and by using those uh, providers, it supercharges WordPress content workflows and engagement with AI functionality. And uh, Distributor helps syndicate content uh, and content reuse across websites, and Elastic Press brings the power of Elasticsearch to WordPress sites. So, those and many of our others um, available on .org and all maintained on GitHub, which will come into play here in a minute. So if you're familiar with uh, distributing plugins on WordPress.org, uh, the plugin team has a handbook, right? And there are requirements, there are guidelines um, that you must follow in order to, um, when you submit a plugin, get accepted into the repo uh, and ideally follow those throughout the, the versions from there. The first one that's listed is Plugins must be compatible with the GPL. Digging in a little deeper, that means not just the code, right? That means images, fonts. Are those GPL compatible? And dependencies, right? If you're bundling something with your plugin, also needs to be GPL compatible. Now, get into a little bit of nightmare scenarios here, right? What if somebody contributes a PR to your project or somebody on your team or you yourself, if you are a single contributor uh, for a plugin and you introduce a new dependency um, or potentially a dependency gets updated and there is an incompatible license, you declare that you are distributing GPL v2 or later, right? But are you? Or potentially the worst scenario is you already aren't actually using third-party dependencies that are GPL compatible, right? Welcome to the life of the director of open source and, and things that actually, unfortunately, wake you up in the middle of the night. So fortunately, those of you on, on GitHub, uh, GitHub Actions comes to the rescue and can help out here. It can help you check for those new dependencies that are introduced. It can help check for updated dependencies. It can help check that those are actually compatible with the license you are saying uh, your plugin is distributed under. It can, you know, if you aren't already aware, it can scan that whole code base and report back and say, yep, no incompatible licenses. And then ongoing, scan all pull requests to make sure that, again, if somebody introduces a new dependency, if a, a pull request updates a dependency and that license happens to change, make sure that you continue to be compatible as you declare your project to be. 
So at 10 up, we make use of one of GitHub's uh, official actions, the dependency review action. There are some others that we tested out. This one just happened to work for, for our case, and this is the example I'm gonna show you here today. So first off, you'll add a dependency, uh, the dependency review action workflow file to your repo, and that basically will say, run against all pull requests and use this action to scan for compatible licenses. You'll make sure that the license that are compatible with what you're declaring uh, are mentioned as that's what the action will check against. And you'll wait for the results of those scans of the code base, fingers crossed, right? And then again, all future PRs will continue to be checked against those licenses that you have in this policy. Optionally, if you maintain multiple projects, you can have uh, a policy all the licenses are compatible hosted in a central repository you maintain, and all your projects can point back to that single file so that if there's a new license that gets approved and is GPL compatible, it can be added in one place instead of two dozen, like in the case of 10up. So this is a little small here, which is why you took a picture of that first slide where I looked really nice in Reykjavik. But what we're looking at here is our project, Insert Special Characters, um, and in here, within the .github folder and then within the workflows folder is the dependency review action. Um, there's a lot of comments in here um, for anybody that does pull this up to, to be helpful, but the most mindful thing in here is eventually we are using that dependency review action and then further on down there is a list of allowed licenses um, that we've done the research and, and know to be compatible with the license that we declared, in this case for insert special characters, um, to be compatible. The action alternatively, alternatively does have a deny list, um, but it seems to be a more prudent approach to uh, include things that you know to be compatible instead of trying to exclude all the ones that aren't and then potentially some other one isn't uh, included and now you've got some things getting through that should not be. Um, so like I said, here's another version of insert special characters, the same workflow file, but at the very bottom, there is uh, uh, a variable here for that config file, which we host uh, in the .github repo for the TenUp organization. And then taking a look at that file that we're linking out to here, effectively just includes those licenses in this central file. This is what we maintain and check against all of our repositories. They all point back to this file. Um, the actual licenses that we have in here we pulled from uh, new.org, uh, also reviewed with um, SPX, spdx.org, uh, which references uh, things that are Free Software Foundation, free or libre, as well as the Open Source Initiative uh, approved licenses. But really the crux of what we have here is uh, coming from new.org that they declare as GPL compatible. So, that first run against your code base, a little nerve wracking, right? Like, do you know for certain that everything you have uh, is compatible, right? So you've declared we're GPL or GPL v2 compatible, sit back and wait for that GitHub action to run. If in the scenario where you run into issues and it says this, uh, this dependency is not compatible with what you say uh, it should be, simply, simply, sorry, fix that, right? Uh, potentially remove that dependency, swap it out for something else, um, and then release an updated version. That's probably the best you can do in this case. Um, I would call it out in the change log, I would call it out in the readme, uh, make sure it's obvious that this version is updated because it is now compatible with what you declared it to be. So then from there, you did that first scan, now you wanna scan all pull requests, right? So that action will run on all PRs that get opened, whether that's you as the repo owner, somebody on your team, or um, if you've got people contributing from the community, we'll also check theirs. That check, again, again, is against those licenses that you declared, and you're not waking up in the middle of the night worried that you are bundling incompatible licenses. So that's, uh, the long and short of it, uh, again, reiterating here, you've got that GitHub action that's created, um, that workflow file. You've got optionally a policy that you link out to if you're maintaining multiple repos, multiple projects, multiple plugins. 
check that code base, fix it if you run into issues, and then otherwise let this keep running and you will know for certain that uh, your plugin is for sure GPL compatible. Again, whether that's GPL v2, whether that's MIT, whether that's BSD3 clause, um, it'll be compatible with what you say it should be. Uh, again, if you've got questions, uh, Jeff Paul, uh, jeff.paul at 10op.com, where I'm the director of open source, and again, at Jeff Paul uh, across most social platforms. And that's all, thank you.